everyone, Mr. Mom Collectibles. I am back with my long-awaited end of the year collection room tour. Now, if you're watching this video, I filmed this technically on New Year's Eve to conclude 2023 as the last video I filmed, but between editing and uploading, you'll be seeing this in 2024. So I just wanna wish those who are watching a happy new year. I hope everything was great. Everyone had a safe, fun, happy new year with your family, friends, loved ones, significant others. And um, so I just wanted to get in and do a 360 room tour of my collection, all my uh, YouTube gear, photography gear, stuff like that, and just other collectibles aside from Hot Toys. I just, I collect a bunch of other stuff. Uh, so this room is gonna be going through some changes potentially in 2024. So I wanted to document the room as it is now because it's possible I will actually be moving out of the space. We are currently renovating my, uh, my basement. And so this room may go down there, you know, move down there, which has a lot more space. And so I just wanted to do an overall uh, room tour to document the room as is, because it's very possible it will be drastically changing um, in 2024. So this space that you see behind me here is my main muscle rack. It houses my Star Wars, DC, and Back to the Future collection. It is 60 inches wide, 36 inches deep, 72 inches high and this is the third iteration of this back wall in terms of how my display looks i actually have a photograph here that i'll put up which shows the original setup which was um in between i would say 2020 to mid 21 which were detoffs um, they, they aligned the back wall had about I don't know, a couple of them and um, they served their purpose for what it was but like many people you know you end up growing out of your space and for me with the detoffs um, they really restricted my vision of how I wanted to collect. As you can see here, the type of display that you see in front of you, you just wouldn't be able to achieve with DTOF with multiple layer, uh, you know, levels and the depth that I'm able to achieve. So I put, I made a video basically outlining what I did to this muscle rack in terms of some modifications I made. So I'll link that in the video, uh, you know, above. But uh, this is my main one, like I said, 60 inches wide, and it houses my three main collections. And then I also have a uh, 36 inch wide here one here which is shorter depth about 24 inches and this houses my mainly my marble stuff so what we're going to do is break this up into different sections i'm basically going to show you everything and then i'll put uh, some timestamps below if you want to jump to some particular sections or rewind to a certain area so without further ado we will get into the room tour so to begin we're going to focus at the top level of my first muscle rack as you can see it's pretty self-explanatory what's here. Ghostbusters, Ecto-1s. I just collect Ecto-1s, Ecto-1As, whatever I find. If I'm walking around Walmart, I see like a little car, I'll pick it up, add to the collection. Uh, this here means a lot to me. It's probably my most precious collectible. It's really what got me started into a lot of stuff, that and Legos. Uh, this is a model, original AMT Ecto-1A model that I got from my grandmother when we were down in Universal Studios. I wanna say when I was about like eight or nine years old, my uncle built it for me. And believe it or not, it's held up condition ever since. This is the original model. It's very faded, but that is uh, one of my most prized possessions that I have. And we have Lego cars, different ones, the Ecto-1A over here, the uh, you know the reissue Kenner cars behind you uh, there. And then this big guy here is the, if, you're familiar, if anyone's familiar with, the 1-8 scale Eagle Moss Ecto-1A. Um, which was, uh, you know, they went out of business and Fan Home has now taken them over. And so I'm waiting for my last few issues to complete this car. Uh, there's the shell of it. I'm trying to, you know, give you some scale. We'll kind of go around the backside. Uh, there's the car itself. It's 1 8 scale, so it doesn't fit this any type of Hot Toys. And it's crazy how big this car is. And yet, um, you know, those who have the, the, the Blitzway Ecto-1, it's even larger. And then this is the actual internals of the car, all the wiring and stuff. So it's pretty well complete. There's just some uh, ornamental stuff I'm waiting for on the top, but then there's the car. And I'll eventually put that together. And then that being said, we're gonna drop down to the first level, um, which is Star Wars. It's a mixture of original trilogy, uh, you know, Disney Plus series figures, things like that. I've done multiple tours of just the shelf. Um, I will say from collecting Hot Toys in 23, Star Wars probably expanded the most for me. Um, I'm kind of lowering, I'm kind of uh, slowing down on Marvel, really kind of sticking to more original figures like 
uh, the original Avengers and some Spider-Man, very select pieces. Uh, Star Wars has really kind of became my passion. I really, that's the one, I would say Star Wars kind of um, was one of the more uh, popular IPs I collected the most of. So just kind of give you a quick run tour of what I have here. We got the um, New Hope Obi-Wan Kenobi, which I absolutely love this figure. Shout out to Jeremy Casa who got that for me this year. The Empire Strikes Back Darth Vader, the Episode One Darth Maul, and uh, you know, maybe we'll see a 2.0 with the announcement from Hot Toys about doing the Episode One Phantom Menace figures. So maybe we'll see a two, uh, you know, 2.0 of this guy. Wouldn't be upset about it. The Mando Luke Skywalker. Behind him is the Ahsoka, and the Snow Speeder Luke. We also have uh, Count Dooku right there. Now all those figures, I've done a video tutorial on those. They're all USB hacked. All those lightsabers there. Um, you know, they uh, all power up via USB. The Ahsoka, I actually credited Denobi. I actually used micro LEDs, followed his tutorial of doing that. But all my lightsabers um, are lit up in this display. So as you can see there, uh, I'll turn the lights down at the very end and kind of show you how everything's powered up. But um, we also have the Sideshow General Grievous, which I'm lucky is still standing in one piece. That is the one and only pose he's ever been in. And behind him, we have the armorer surrounded by two Death Watch Mandos. And next to the Death Watch Manos, we have two of the three Night Owls. We have uh, Casca Reeves and um, Bo-Katan. Eventually I'll get um, Axe Wolves, just trying to find a really good deal on him. I don't even need him uh, brand new. Then we have Cad Bane there, which a lot of people think, you know, is a, it's definitely a top 10 for a lot of uh, collectors out there. I can't argue with that one. And the OG Mando, which is still one of my favorite, the Durasteel. In front of him, we have one of two uh, Chrome Mandos from season two. This one I actually removed all of the weathering from him and use the Pedro Pascual head sculpt, which looks fantastic. And next to him, we have Django Fett, and we have our line of Fets, Django Fett, and then we have Boba Fett in the robe, part of the two pack. And we have Arena Fett there, which still was probably my one and only FOMO purchase, which I'm so thankful that I actually got because uh, I love this figure. And then next to him is the other Boba from the two pack. I will eventually try to hunt down the uh, prototype white and the animated um, to kind of cl collect my uh, haul of uh, FETs that I'm, I'm working on. So that's kind of one of my goals for next year, for 2024. And then uh, right here in the centerpiece, it's kind of hard to miss this. It is the Fennec Shan, which I think is one of the best head sculpts of 2023. Easily top five, could even be top two or you know you maybe even number one for some. And the Boba Fett on throne. And this piece here is kind of hard to, uh, let me focus in on it. It's kind of hard to uh, shy away from. This was made by, uh, this was a custom 1 6 scale uh, throne that I got uh, this year. I absolutely love this piece. It is true to scale. There's other ones out there that just aren't true 1 6 but this one here is unbelievable. I'll link that information where I got this from in the video below. Um, but this is absolutely great. Legacy dioramas, like legacy custom diorama or legacy dioramas is where I got this from, but I'll, I'll put that information in if you're interested. Um, on that. And then standing on top of the throne, we have the Marshall Cad, Cad, uh, Cobb Vanth, which I um, absolutely love this pose. When I did the unboxing of this figure, this was the last post I, a pose I had him in, and I never changed it. Love it. And then this little cluster of guys here, we have the DX Bespin Luke, which is USB powered in. Behind him is a Stormtrooper Commander. Just I stripped it down to be a normal Stormtrooper because I never had one before. Next to him, we have the original New Hope Sand Trooper. I grabbed this when the Dewback got announced just because I want to do a little diorama with the Dewback, him, and a couple of, of the other Stormtroopers. And then we got a little trio here. We got the other Chrome Mando on a little diorama piece with Grogu. Behind him is the Return of the Jedi Scout Trooper. We have the Attack of the Clones, R2-D2, Lando from uh, Empire Strikes Back. And then to round it off, we have the Empire Strikes Back um, Boba Fett standing on top of the Sideshow Collectibles Han Solo in Carbonite, which is a, a sleeper piece, absolutely great piece. But this kind of rounds out the shelf in terms of uh, doing a quick rundown. Now what my plans are for this is I am gonna eventually split the shelf and have it just be original trilogy and then kind of like do like a Boba Fett um, Hall of Armor with some other Mandos. I'm gonna eventually split that when I get more pre when more of my pre-orders for Star Wars come in next year. Um, I'm gonna you know build up some more volume of figures and then split the shelves and have like I said the Boba base and then all the Bobas and even like Mandos and Disney Plus esque figures together and then original trilogy will be below like with the Dewbacks and bigger pieces like that. So that is what my intent is. Um, one more thing about this the shelf as you can see 
I do have custom risers that I built made out of wood, as you can see behind the, you know, the Mando Luke is standing on one and then the uh, Snow Speeder Luke, they're just basically made out of wood with wood risers that I built. And then I just funneled the wires from the USB. You can kind of see Ahsoka's wires right there. They're just funneled down and, in, and behind um, Darth Maul, you see a little red light right there is a little red light that's my usb power bank and i just wired everything in usb and that's kind of how that is and it's all hooked up to a usb light so uh a usb hub so when i just click a you know app on my phone everything powers off powers on so that's the first shelf um probably one of my more favorite displays that i put together i really spent a lot of time on this one this year and i'm really looking forward to how it's going to evolve in the upcoming year so now the next shelf is going to be the DC slash uh, rando shelf, just because there's not a lot of DC figures out there. However, I will say in 24, I would, I would argue that DC is definitely going to escalate for in terms of my pre-orders. I pretty much have all the Flash figures, the 89 Batman, the Batmobiles, all that stuff coming in. So my DC collection is very much going to um, evolve drastically going into the next year. But... You basically have um, the RoboCop, the original die cast, and the RoboCop 3. And then you have uh, Peacemaker, which easily top five figure for me this year, and I think for a lot of other collectors. And then another grail that I picked up is the Harley Quinn from Suicide Squad. This is an absolutely fantastic piece. And next to her, we have the John Wick Chapter 2, and he is rocking the CRO Customs belt um, and extra holsters. And then here we have uh, a purchase that I got last year, but you know it's it's blah to me, which is the bat pod, just because I you know I just it just takes up a lot of space right now. It's not killing me, but it's just something that I got it for a really good deal on Sideshow, but kind of wish I you know it, it was a forgettable purchase where I really kind of looking back, I didn't really need it. And speaking of Batman, we have the DX19 there. And then behind the DX19, we have the WB100 Wonder Woman, which one of my top five purchases of the year, 100%. Holding up even after four or five months of owning her, the hair, everything looks absolutely fantastic. Um, to me, it's the greatest Wonder Woman 1-6 scale figure made until potentially InArt makes theirs. I know that they're doing the uh, Superman, which I have on order, the uh, BVS Superman. And speaking of the Trinity, we have my makeshift Trinity. You have the BVS Batman, which is my favorite suit. I do have the 2.0 on order, just excited for that one. And the Justice League Superman, which fun fact, that's actually my, I believe it's like my third or fourth Hot Toys purchase ever. And then next to him, we have a third party. Um, I forget who made this one. This is the Jared Leto Nightmare Joker, which I actually like this figure a lot. I think it holds up very well. And then we have the uh, Nightmare Batman, which was part of the two pack. And next to him, we have the Justice League that I'm putting together, kind of like a greatest hits of each character. You have Aquaman from the solo movie, 84 Wonder Woman, the black suit Superman. That is the new tactical suit Batman that came out uh, in 23. And we have Cyborg, which I also USB hacked him as well. And behind Cyborg, we have the Batman Begins. That's like the, if you want to call it 2.0, it's the one that came out end of last year. Uh, that's a custom velvet cape I have on him. And next to him is the DX... Uh, Batman from 89 and next to him are the Batman and Robin as you can see there and then finally to round out we have the Golden Armor Wonder Woman who's uh, on her base kind of hovering above and once again this shelf also does have another custom riser as you can see there that uh, elevates the collection and kind of gives me more depth and able to display the figures this way which I absolutely love and so the changes that will be happening to the DC shelf um, I do have the Hot Toys 89 Batmobile and the Jazz Inc. Batmobile on order. So I will be breaking up the DC shelf. I do have a lot of figures from like the Flash, the, the you know Robert Pattinson, Batman. Um, there's just a lot of DC figures I actually have coming in. So I'm excited to see how that shelf is going to go. I most likely have a dedicated 89 Batman shelf. And then DC figures will be their own separate shelf. So Star Wars and DC, once again, they're going to expand in 24. And I'm really excited to see... Um, visually how they look then compared to now with the shelves as, as you see it. So we'll move down to the next shelf, which is the Back to the Future and a little bit of random stuff. So here you have the Back to the Future Part 1 figures, Marty and Doc. And then next to them you have the Part 2 DeLorean, which I don't really have to talk about that. Everyone think that the, it's been said enough about this. And then next to them you have... The Back to the Future Part 3 figures posed up behind a custom 
diorama clock made by Rhino Dioramas. I'll link that in the video as well if you're interested in seeing that. That is a functional 1 6 scale clock if you choose to put batteries in it that uh, tells time or you can have it fixed, whichever version you want to order. But I think these two, you know, the little, uh, that pose right there looks so great. And then another rando is the um, Iconic Studios Patrick Bateman, which I absolutely love that piece as well. Um, I'm eventually, you'll see some other Back to the Future stuff that I have in my collection. Once again, I'll probably have a Back to the Future shelf next year. And then the Patrick Bateman, the RoboCop, the John Wick, some of the random ones that I have in my collection, plus some random ones that I have on order, John Wick Chapter 4, um, and some other figures, they'll probably be on their own shelf, like an 80s slash random shelf. So pretty simple. This one's pretty, uh, you know, pretty you know, basic for right now. I do hope when it comes to Back to the Future, I can acquire the Part 2 figures, and I hope Hot Toys does deliver on a tease and, tease, and brings us the at least the Mark III DeLorean. That'd be pretty cool to have both cars in the display. So I'm not trying to collect all the DeLoreans, but I'll welcome anything that comes out at retail pricing versus chasing it down on the aftermarket. Now this little corner here, this just has my uh, multicolor light that I have that's in the background of my videos, my Michael Keaton standee, and then just, just the wood built-in shelf that I just have other like, you know, 3.75 figures and some models and stuff like that. These are some just sports autographs and things that I have here. And then moving over, this is the second muscle rack and we're just gonna go right to the top down. And these are the other Back to the Future cars, similar as the Ghostbusters. I collect the Back to the Future cars. Anytime I see one, I grab one. So all different scales there. And then there is an original bottle of Pepsi Perfect. My wife actually got that for me for Christmas a few years back. And then here is the Eagle Moss 1 8 scale DeLorean, fully built all the electrical works and everything. I just don't have it plugged in because this is not the intended final destination for the vehicle. Um, this one here I built middle of 2020 going into 2021. It was a pain in the ass to build. Anyone who's still continuing to build, you know, my prayers with you. This one was absolutely a headache. It does look good as a finished product, but you know, it does make you think about whether or not it was worth it. Like I said, it's one eighth scale, so it's out of scale compared to one sixth. So I like to try to figure out a place to put it so that way it all makes sense. Um, so moving down, we're gonna move. In. Here is my Spider-Man shelf, and now this is like my Sp Spider-Man slash Rogues gallery of villains. And here, just kind of going around the horn, we have the homemade suit here, and behind him you have the um, Far From Home suit, the new. Black Panther uh, 2.0, if you want to call it that, the new updated version. And then we have the classic suit Spidey, love this figure. And we have the original advanced suit from the PS5 game. This is actually like the second figure I ever bought, and this one really does mean a lot. Um, I absolutely love this figure. And then we have the new Andrew Garfield Spider-Man here. And speaking of the GOAT, Toby, this is a third party Toby McGuire. It's not bad, I paid like 100 bucks for him. The body kind of stinks, it's really loosely articulated, but it does come with some red Nikes. And at the time making this video, they did announce the new, uh, you know, the release, the new Toby from uh, no, you know, far, uh, no Way Home. So I'm excited to pick that up in the collection. And then we have here, this is the comic book series Spider-Man. I did a review on this recently. Absolutely love this piece. This was another top five purchase for me of the year. I just love the colors on it. It just pops in person. This is a figure that um, honestly seeing in person, you could watch a thousand videos of it, photos of it. It's one of those where it changes your perception seeing it in person. Just the metallic eyes. I mean, it looks just so awesome. I mean, you can see me there, how reflective they are. There I am right there. And behind him is, and there's the little green goblin, and behind that is the Willem Dafoe green goblin. Absolutely love this piece. This is a shelf that, you know, the green goblin, I have the, the head sculpt on it just because if I put the helmet on there, it is not going to fit um, because I didn't drop the shelf down and I don't want to drop the shelves down and seeing as I'm going to be doing some renovations anyway, he's perfectly fine that way. And then I have my villains here. We got Mysterio, Electro, Doc Ock, and we have Thanos to round it out. And then, so this shelf, um, when I get other villains in, like I'm gonna use the uh, Sandman base from, you know, Toby, that I'm gonna be making my Sinister Six collection. So it'll be, this shelf will be like mostly Sinister Six, and my, uh, my Spider-Mans will be on this shelf. And then moving below, we have the Stark Industries makeshift setup here. It's uh, Iron Man with a little bit of uh, other Avengers. So we have my very first hot toy I ever purchased, which is the 
Iron Man Mark 43. I actually bought it, sold it, and then rebought it because I was an idiot. And uh, my advice is never sell your first hot toy just because you will regret it. And then we have next to him my favorite Iron Man armor of all time, which is the Mark III. Absolutely love this piece. It just blew me away. And then uh, we have the Whiplash. This is the newer version, the 2.0. And next to him, we have the reissue of the War Machine Mark I. Uh, going up on the next shelf, we have the Infinity War Thor, which in my opinion is the best Thor that they've made. And next to him, we have the Endgame Captain America. And ironically, Endgame Captain America. And then we have here the mech test, Tony Stark working on his little bench here with some accessories. And behind him, we have the Iron Man Mark III construction. And to round out the shelf, we got the Mark 47, the Mark 5, the Mark 50, and the Mark 7. And then I'll just wrap up the bottom shelf below and kind of tell you my overall thoughts. The bottom shelf is a flex space for right now. We got my big guys here that I can't fit anywhere. We got Venom the Age of Ultron Hulk, and we have uh, Hawkeye, um, uh, Hawkeye, well, not Hawkeye, uh, Falcon in the back. So this shelf here, and you see all this stuff, these packs and magazines, those are my uh, subscriptions to the Eagle Moss Ecto-1, and I'm just letting them build up right now, and then I will be building that car. But my intention for this shelf is um, I plan on having an original Avengers display. I just need to pick up the Endgame Loki. I need to pick up a Black Widow and Hawkeye, and I'm gonna make basically kind of how I did it with Justice League, my own version of the Avengers, just pick the best of all the characters and make an Avengers setup, and then what I'll do is put other Avengers like Black Panther and some you know, War Machine, ones that don't you know kind of stick out like a sore thumb, kind of put them all together, and then I wanna have an Iron Man only shelf. I do have a couple Iron Mans coming in, the Mark VI Gantry, um, the newly announced Mark II, which I'm super excited for, and that means I have to chase down the Mark uh, four on the aftermarket and then eventually pull the trigger and find a deal on the mark one and i'll have actually all the original seven suits which i'm so thankful of having the opportunity to get those i never thought that i'd be able to get and have a hall of armor the original seven are my favorite suits overall so to be able to have all those is just absolutely you know it's outstanding to me and then like i said my thought my uh you know my vision on the spider-man will be the villains and all that stuff so this is the final muscle rack here of my figures and then we're just going to round out the tour which once again continuing this is my custom built proton pack i built this myself this is not the hasbro one this is made out of fiberglass and metal and everything and it took me like a year year and a half to make um, i have some photos here things like that a uh, little mirror right there it's a makeup mirror it's actually my grandmother's it's a very sentimental piece to me it's one of only a couple things i still have with my grandmother when she passed away back in um, 2012 and every morning she would sit there at the kitchen table and do her makeup in this mirror and um, so I have this here it kind of sits in the corner just as a little kind of uh, in memory of so that's to my grandmother and then here in this little corner this little cutout I have my guitars my acoustics my electrics my fenders tellies strats and my amp there and then like I said I made a lot of videos in 2023 of me throwing out boxes and stuff like that and people ask like hey where are your accessories what do you do with them and that's what this red toad is there's all my accessories there every couple months I go through everything catalog it put them in ziploc bags like just kind of clean it all up right now it's just a bunch of stuff in the in the tote there's my little fold-out table I use for reviews and then to round out the collection tour uh, this is my YouTube setup looks a little sloppy just that's how I am with how I do stuff because I'm always I'm always this room is the one thing about the room is that it's always I'm always doing something either reposing figures uh, making content photos videos audio doing something I'm, I'm always constantly just doing stuff so how you kind of see the room is kind of how it is and what I do to create is I have a, a Mac mini hooked up to two dual monitors speaker system basic stuff and then the camera that I use to actually film on streams or do videos are, is a, and photography is a Canon M50 Mark II. Um, that's what I use primarily. So if you see me doing like reaction videos, like I'll be, you know, there's a reaction video out for the Iron Man uh, Mark II. I'll, I'll film it through StreamYard and that's the camera that I'm using. The video that I'm using right now to shoot this is, I'm just using my iPhone, honestly, because it's easy, handheld, quick. I do a lot of editing on my phone also, so I can shoot and then take it to go. So I can film stuff, and then a lot of times what I do is I'll film content, 
And then when I have some spare time or if I'm laying in bed watching TV, that's when I do my editing. I don't just sit there and do it all in one shot. For me, I need the time because, you know, like I said, my family and stuff is most important. Um, filming stuff, as long as I can get the stuff filmed, that's all that matters to me. Anything I can edit this stuff later, so that's what I'm, I'm not too worried about that. In terms of a lot of other stuff like audio, I use uh, you know a Shure SM7B. That's the main mic that I use for like live streams and stuff. I did have a Blue Yeti, which is this right here, but honestly, it was just picking up too much background noise. My daughter actually sleeps across the hall from me, and like you know, so it was just picking up too much ambient noise. So I switched over to the Shure just just because it was more isolated and it was better. And then finally, I just use other stuff, gimbals, handheld devices. I'm actually recording this audio right now using the Rode wireless um, M-series microphones, in, uh, external mics. So that's plugged into my phone right now. I'll actually take that off so you guys can see. So that's the Rode wireless mic. That's hooked up to my phone to get better audio. Um, when I'm filming, you know, handheld and stuff like that. So normally when I film reviews, like actual toy reviews, I film everything, just the video first, and then I do an audio overdub later because I want to make sure, you know, sure I articulate my thoughts correctly and I'm not, I am known to ramble and talk a lot. So I would rather film the audio first and then, uh, I'm sorry, the video first and then do the audio after. But lately I've been trying out just doing it all in one shot. Like for example, the Spider-Man review, I did it all in one take. And then um, underneath it's just electrical, extra cables, accessories, and my toolboxes, one six scale tools, my vacuums, my cleaners, and just extra stuff. So this pretty much rounds out the room just to give you guys an idea. But uh, how you see it is how it is. And once again, like I said, the room itself uh, it will be going through some probably changes in 2024 in terms of relocating to downstairs where I'll have more space. In terms of muscle racks, I'll be buying more muscle racks to go across you know, the room, the space that I'll be using. And so I'm really excited about that. So I'm holding off on buying any additional racks or anything. I still have a lot of space that I could put figures in, so I'm not too worried about that. But uh, proper planning is very important. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. I really do appreciate the support I've gotten. All This year has been pretty wild in terms of collecting, just making content, stuff like that. And I hope to continue doing that into 2024 and beyond. I really appreciate all of the support that I've received. Thank you so much. Um, make sure to drop a like on this video. I really would appreciate it. Uh, subscribing to the channel if this is in fact your first time and you're you know interested, you like the content that you see here. There'll be more of it coming. And drop a you know drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts. If you you know what you what you like, um, what stands out in terms of your favorite aspects of things. I really do appreciate the support as always. I love you know I appreciate the love. And um, this is Mr. Mom Collectibles, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.